one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Miss. That's it. That is the time frame for nearly every single dropback of Tua and Skylar Thompson this season and for most quarterbacks in the NFL. Now, I want you to focus on that time frame. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Miss. That's it. And I say this because a lot of the stuff that I'm hearing, well-intentioned, well-meaning, and even has a lot of information within it that is quality information, doesn't have this very basic concept. And it's the same concept in the foundational failures of evaluations for Tua during his career that led to all the ridiculous talk that was going on. And now it's going with the same direction for Skylar Thompson. I don't know everything there is to know about football. I think I know a little bit. But I'm kind of like Rain Man. You know, I hold on to the foundations of production on a football field and the foundations of evaluations when I evaluate players and teams and such. Now, as I get away from those foundations, my accuracy rating goes down just like everyone. And there's other people out there that know more than I do. But my adherence to the foundations, I think, is what gives me some value. And I'm not seeing it just like I didn't see it with Tua. We had the 45th best offensive line in football last year. For those who don't get my joke, there's 32 teams. So we're 13 places worse than the 32nd. Well, we'll be the 31st, so you know I'm 14. But you know what I'm saying. It was that bad. So there's no way. The foundation of positions, sides of the foot, all this other stuff, it's very simple. I got a great quote. I, I, this is why I love comments. I've got this great quote from somebody. Chris always has really good stuff for, among a lot of people. Wisdom that I, I, I take into my own repertoire of information. He said, you can see here, there's been a constant saying from the greatest coaches in the game. If you cannot protect your quarterback, then you don't have much of a football team. That is a foundational principle. Two two foundational principles. If a quarterback is going to throw the football, before you look at anything else, you must assess the protection. Nothing else matters more than protection. Once the protection is settled, then you go to level two, second level. When you're throwing a pass, first is throwing platform and mechanics. Everything else after that, then you start grading it out. So you start with protection, and then you, for the quarterback himself, you start with mechanics and platform. And then you can build out, and as you build out from there, it starts to get a little wishy-washy. Now, I'm saying this for a few very critical reasons, Finn fans. Very critical reasons. And I please, I ask you to pay attention to this. Because part of our problems is because some of this stuff that goes on. We keep repeating and repeating and repeating. And people saying this and they're saying that and saying this. Really, on a football field, there's one core reason for our failure. One. Now, I'm seeing here... Joe Shad, Joe Shad, good guy, man. I, I like his coverage. I like his stuff. I appreciate it. I use it. All this. But you see here, if Skylar Thompson does start for the Dolphins versus Vikings, what a great opportunity to evaluate a late-round QB exceeding expectations. No! No! It was a bad evaluation opportunity last week. It's a bad evaluation opportunity this week. Why? Well, Going into this game, most likely we'll have gross protection issues. We'll neither really be able to run the football effectively enough, and we won't be able to protect enough. Now, if we protect, maybe he'll be right, but history says we won't. Understand, two in 2020, he sucks. 
Flores is pulling him. He was put in without fully getting himself to a rehab position where he was ready. He didn't know the playbook. It was a poor evaluation. 2021, we had, as now you know my joke, 45th best offensive in line in football. It was a poor evaluation for him. If it's average or close to average, the settings and situations and framework, then you can evaluate. And then in truth, if the protections are so good, it inflates a quarterback's ability. So the best place to evaluate a quarterback is when things are kind of okay. That's a flat baseline, really, to get the best evaluation. Skyler, I'm going to go into the the statistics, and then I'm going to tie them into Tua, because the problem is poor evaluations on Skyler are going to set Tua up for failure. And it's critical that we as Finn fans are not misguided. We have to keep our eye on the ball because we play a big influence. And some of it's good and some of it's bad. Our owner, for whatever you like him or don't like him, he listens to the fans and he tries to do stuff based on the fans. So however we're screaming, if we scream loud enough about something, he's going to try to do it to make everything happy. And a lot of times what we're screaming about is not what needs to be fixed. But if we could be together, and this is, you know, I am not saying I am Mr. Evaluator. I'm not. I get things wrong all the time. All the time. But the community... Whoever they are, big and small, uh, fans, we create a communal understanding, a communal conscious, and a communal power. And if it's heading in the wrong direction, it will not help our team. So, I want to get into a series of realities about our protection with multiple stats to create analytics not just one stat he's got 50 touchdowns greatest quarterback no 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 multiple over a time frame which when you look at the games even in a cursory look it will all make sense if it already hasn't made sense so want to give you a basic little layout and then I'll do the commercial and then I will lay this stuff out with graphics so you can Let it marinate in your mind. Because just think about the pressure that was put on Tua last year from the fans and the media. And you had Ross looking for Watson, looking for Brady and everything else. The fans, though, if they're savvy, they can help their team and their players. And it's looking like our team needs help. Savvy? Okay, so when you see, and this is not to say anyone's doing this or not doing this. But when you look at somebody evaluate a quarterback, okay, certain principles, the eye of the quarterback makes the defense flow. So sometimes you'll see the quarterback looking right, and there'll be a guy open on the left, and they'll be like, well, you should have thrown it here. It was wide open. As the quarterback goes through his progressions, which is this next one, we don't know what their progressions are. We don't know if they're starting on the right progressions. Progressions changes by what the formations they're seeing and all this other stuff. We don't know. We're guessing. So the quarterback has a series of progressions. He's got a time to go through it. And as his eye, if his eye goes to a progression and it's only on the right, the defense, if it's in zone, is flowing. And this will happen at times to create open guys on the back end. And this is why really good protection will allow that quarterback to come back and see that open guy. But if you don't have the protection, you ain't ever getting there. Now, I did a music video about Skyler's time in my, you'll see it, Jets Creek, to let you understand one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, and that's it. The speed, the blurring of images and bodies, it's moving so fast, especially when you're getting hit and getting hit a lot. And he was hit like I've rarely seen. And I'm not seeing this. I'm saying, well, you know, the protection wasn't bad. No, no, it, it wasn't. it's not that it was. I mean, the protection was bad. The protection was horrible. Beyond horrible. It was, you could not operate in this. If Tua was there, it might have been a little bit better here and there. But when I show you his protection levels and his production levels, you'll say, oh man, I might have to rethink. Okay, so eyes flow, receive a safety. These guys are friends or they know each other. 
You could drive that football in there and he's open. But if you got a safety three, four yards away and he's eyeing that guy, dude, you could kill this guy. You could get this guy concussed and knocked out. You've got to also take that into account when you're saying, well, he could have fit it in there. And as I said, progressions. Now we'll get to protection. Offensive line. The protections and the run game work hand in hand. Think, you're a linebacker, okay? You, your job is to handle the run and drop into those middle zones, for the most part, sometimes side zones, sometimes if it's a, a, a Tampa 2, you drop, you know, but you know what I'm saying. So, depending on the team you're playing, you've got to either attack that run game or drop into that zone, and if one side is out of whack, so one side's weak and one side's strong, then you're going to begin focusing to take care of that strong side. This is why balance is brutal. A balanced offense, if you do the studies, linebacker is the toughest position to be very successful in the NFL. You could be a great run stopper, and you could be a good cover guy, but there are very, 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 very few cover guys and run stoppers. It's not like the old days. It's changed. It is so hard to be a linebacker. So if you can run that football with consistency and suck those linebackers up, you're opening up vast amount of space. Not to mention a defensive coordinator is going to begin calling run stopping play calls. So we had the 26 yards before contact. That means 25 other teams are getting more yards before contact than us. Now it's 2.2. So I'll take it a little bit higher and say 2.3. That brings us to 20th. Once you get to 2.4, 2.5, you're starting to get in a very manageable zone and a good zone. So we have a very poor running attack. We're actually the 30th ranked rushing offense. We give up the second most pressures in the NFL as well as being one of the worst run blocking offensive lines. We're number one in hits. We give up the most amount of hits on our quarterback than anybody. Second, second, second most pressures, first most hits. Third in hurries. And we can't run the football. Think about that. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. If you've been banged up all the time. You're, well, I'm going to calmly go through my, no, no, you got to add in these elements as you do a film study. It's critical. It's critical to take yourself and put it into the film, not to sit back, you know, and look at it. Yeah, it's nice to do that, but you've got to add the real elements to it, starting with protection, starting with the quarterback's mentality, how he's being protected both physically and mentally, as well as then you add into all the 50 other things that go along with it. And this is the worst. Suck at run blocking. Suck at protection. And we had the third least blitzes on us. That means we're seeing four and three man fronts more than 29 other teams. Think about that. Think about how bad that is. How can you really evaluate anybody. That's like saying, you know, I got a fireman friend, you know, we're going to we'll train him, see, evaluate how he does. All right, uh, you know, cover him in gasoline and send him into that fire. Okay, Bob, go in there and put out the fire. Oh, he never made it out. That guy was a sucky fireman. Well, fired. That's what our quarterbacks are under. And you'll say, well, no, not Tua. Wait, wait. Let me show you. Now, the nice news is Tua is a better option than Skyler at the moment. He's got veteran savviness. He's got the quicker release. He understands things. And if you go look at him, he's 1.4% over completion expect, uh, expectancy, which is like fifth or sixth best or something like that. Jalen Hurts is the only like notable quarterback that's above him. So he's doing really well. He would have done better than Skyler. But Skyler had an admirable performance considering he was doused in gasoline sent into the fire and said go on Skyler put it out all right so now I'm gonna before I get into all that I just want to say a shout out I'm trying to do this live stuff technical things and 
figuring it all out. It's crazy. Um, with Tommy over at uh, Mafia Sports Report, we're going to talk about the entire NFL, obviously Dolphins and Bills and the big stories and stuff. So I'm going to be there Friday at 930. I'm still trying to figure it out. I see all these guys, you know, Dudley Do Wrong, TD, and, uh, you know, all these guys. They're so good at what they do. They do it live. I don't know how they do it. I'm trying to figure it out because I know it's part of the game. So, I'd like you know, if you guys want, stop by and check us out. Tommy's a great guy, and I'm learning the ropes. But... Aside from that, I want to say thank you for stopping by. The comments really is what tells me I'm doing good or not on the show. And you guys have such awesome comments. So thank you for the comments, the likes, the subscribes, and the views. And I want to give a shout out to Ace Perhead, my sponsor, because without them, without you, I don't get to talk football like this as much as I do. So I am grateful. Ace Per Head's betting software is the premier white label platform for bookies to manage their players and grow their sportsbook operation. Click the link in the description below to get set up in minutes. Ask for the Curtis promo and get a special introductory discount. Okay, here is a list of the quarterbacks and you can see pressure, pressure. We are ranked 25th worst protections we give up, well, this was Tua. This is with Tua. This is not including Skyler. So you say, what happened? Skyler, it takes us even farther down. But Tua was getting 26.4% pressure rating. He was throwing the ball in 2.3 seconds, which is only a tad quicker, tad quicker than what Skyler is. And if you go look through it, we are throwing a football like middle to top third of the league. And we still have this kind of pressure. Look at the pressure that Tom Brady has. He gets it on 2.1 seconds. And that part of him manipulating things and understanding clearly. Clearly. But those two tenths of a second is like an eternity to these guys. They're so special. But he only got 12% uh, pressure rate. J- uh, Jones. He's got the same same as Skyler. And less than, uh, a little bit more than Tua. Six, uh, 12.6%. Josh Allen. 2.3, same as Tua. He's got half at 12.7. Trubisky, 17. Uh, uh, Jimmy G, 17. Brissett, 18. One of the best offensive lines in football. And you can go through this and you can see that there's a correlation between pressure and how quickly you get the ball out. There's a mix in there. And that kind of helps point to what this offense needs to do, what it's doing, and how well the offensive line is Tua was under a tremendous amount of pressure. But let's look specifically through his games, and you'll see a correlation of success and failure based on this pressure. And that's why if you don't tie the pressure in to Skyler's performance, then you're not understanding Tua's situation. And if Tua comes in without Tehran or an injured Tehran and he starts getting the same amount of pressure, people are going to say he sucks, it was an aberration, and the wrong narrative will start again. Again. And the reason for our problems won't be identified, and the people who caused our problems won't be identified, and they'll still be around if this trends in this direction. So, Skyler, as you could see here, at the bottom, 2.4 seconds and 48.6 pressure rate. Almost double of what two experienced throughout the season. Don't you think pressure should be a factor? And you could say, well, he was late on. Yeah, he was points uh, one tenth of a second late if you want to go that route. Do you think that's going to knock that down to uh, 12%? Uh-uh. All right, so here, let's take a look at Tua week by week. 8.3 intended air yards, 41.7% pressure rate. He was 22 for 33 and 270 yards with 22.6 bad throw percentage. And that was against a 13th ranked defense. That's not even elite pressure defense. It's 13th. It's getting there. It's getting there but it's not even elite. Baltimore, that was the big game. The bulk of his stats come from this game. If you took this game out, you'd say, Tua sucks. He sucks. 36 of 50, 469, 6.6 intended air yards. What a conservative overall day. You had those big bombs, obviously, over the top, but the majority of the day was underneath. 
and he only had 6% bad uh, throw percentage, but it was 15.7% pressure rate. What less, a little bit more than what Brady experienced all year. And that was the good game. That was the anomaly. Get back to Buffalo, 13 of 18, 186, 9.8 yards, a little bit deeper again, 16.7% bad throw, 31.6 pressure rate. And got knocked out of the game. Not because of that, you know, there was a push or whatever. But you could see he was having a hard go of it. Some big plays in there, but that was against the Bills' gutted secondary. They literally only had one guy that starts in their secondary in that game. Think about that. Then you go to Cincy. 8 of 14 for 110 yards, trying to go deep, 11.4, because the underneath stuff was kind of getting taken away a little bit. 20% 20% pressure rate and 21.4 bad throw percentage. And that 20 is pretty high because he was pressured, he was being moved. And if you look, 13th, 14th for Cincy, 15th for Buffalo, 26 pressure rate for Baltimore. And so Baltimore had no secondary really. And couldn't really get after the quarterback. And that's how to. So if you give to a good protection with these receivers, he will kill you. They got pressure early and then it fell apart because they started to play over zones. And not pressure him and not get after him. But look at that. Take that game out. Look at the pressure rates and look at the success. That's not good. That's terrible. What happens when you play a top five pass rushing defense or top ten? that can actually have an offense without Tehran. Now, let's take a look at Skyler's game. Skyler, he was 19 for 33 for 166, 6.9 yards, intended air yards. Very conservative. Very, very conservative. Bad throw percentage, 16.1, 48.6 against the fourth best pass rushing defense. 48.6. Look at New England. He had one touchdown. He had a lot of yards, but didn't get any scores. He wasn't able to be what everyone thought he was going to be. 50 points a game easy. And it's not because of him. It's not because of the receivers. It's not because of McDaniel. It's because the protection is a disaster. Disaster. Not the 45th, but the 39th best offensive in football without Tehran. Tehran's not in there. How is anybody supposed to succeed like that? How can you go through the film with this kind of pressure and start by talking about how he's throwing and as progressions? You can't. Now, once this protection is good, then you can begin to evaluate other things. Tua would not, because you would see right here, he had 41.7. Bad throw percentage, 22.6. He had some yards, a lot of yards, but it was a close game, and the defense really won it for us. I think we put, what, uh, 13 points on with the offense? You can see 31.6 with the Buffalo Bills. Tight game. Where was offense? Same place it will be going forward if we don't have protection. And... Skyler deserves a fair evaluation, just like Tua did. And I really don't think either of these quarterbacks likely will have a fair evaluation because that's not even near decent protection. It's literally the worst in the NFL. This is the worst offensive line in football, again. And it's way worse without Tehran. Jackson's coming back and people are getting excited. Think about that. Jackson. And you're excited. So, guys, I hope you understand. I know this went on a little long, but I really need to. We've got to rally around these quarterbacks and truth and understand the situation. If this season fails, it's not the defense. They can be second. But you have Hill and Waddle, and you got no offensive line and no offensive production. That's the first place you have to start. And then the first place you have to start is the fundamentals, protection. Anyway, Curtis saying, thank you for staying to the end. I hope it's not too long. Catch you next time. Be well. Go Fins. 
we're all together in this. Whatever channel you got, whatever we're all Finn fans, and we all want to see our team win. Be well. Start building your own online sports book today by getting signed up with acebred.com service that allow you to book action on sports from all around the world.